So I want to tell you what I did. I grew up in Revere, barely out of your district, but I noticed you covered Chelsea. My mother taught there, but when she got married in 1931, they fired her because women could not get married. She got married on a Sunday, there were two more days of school, and they came to her and they said to her, you cannot teach those two days because when women get married, they're all through. <clears throat> so I grew up pretty local, and I served in Peru, in Puno, Peru, which is about two and a half miles out. And I came back and I went to dental school, and after dental school, I, uh, I signed up for the group called Amigos, and I went to Nicaragua and Colombia, where I went out to the middle of nowhere and I pulled about 150 or 160 teeth every day. And uh, I would go there and do that, and I did it in 1971, a year and a half before their earthquake, and a year and a half after in 74. But I would work out in the middle of nowhere and go town to town and take out about 150, 160 teeth every day. I went to Columbia and I was just telling a story that I went on a mule to get where I was going and uh, it would make John Wayne look like a sissy. But I did that. And one of the things, I, I've been to Nicaragua three times working, and I'll tell you a story in 1974, which was not very nice, was I went into a town and there was a sign that said dentist. And I said to the mayor, you, uh, I shouldn't be here, you have a dentist. And he said, don't worry, people you see are not the ones he sees. He comes out of the capital once a month for four days and lives on this house and he the others. So I got some little wooden chair, I'm taking out teeth, and a girl on 19 comes to see me. She's got two terrible teeth. And I said to her, why do you have a toothache? Why don't you see the dentist? And she says, he charges too much. I said, how much does he charge? $2.80. I said, what happens if you say to him, I have a bad toothache, but I don't have that much money? She said, he'll take it out for 28 cents, but he won't give you a shot first. <laughs> and if volunteers like me or other guys don't go, and women, then that's not going to get done. And these people will get that done without any local anesthesia. So I've been there three times, and I've been in Columbia. I also worked with a migrant labor project around Boston when I first got out of school and stuff like that. So I do that. I, um, I work now, I'm still working, and one of the places, I work two places, but one of them is in Lawrence. And I have about 90% of my patients are Dominican. Mm -hmm. And I can use my language to talk with them. And I, of course, not too many expect, people expect me to speak Spanish. <laughs> but when I go in there and I meet them and I explain to a mother what I want to do, what's wrong with the kid and what I want to do, it's a lot nicer for her. They look at me like, what's crazy? What is this crazy green guy doing speaking <laughs> like this? But it's a lot nicer for her. And um, let me tell you, that's, Enough of me. And let me tell you a couple, two other friends of mine. A couple guys in my group, one became assistant superintendent in Chicago, wrote, he was an American Indian, he wrote the work describing the language of the Colville Indians in Washington. I wish we got Michael Rich here. Michael's a guy from Natick, and he came back from Peace Corps, went to medical school. He's been with the uh, Farmers Group doing that in Rwanda and other places. But he went to Doctors Without Borders in Uzbekistan. And they did okay. They got the Nobel Peace Prize for their work. So it's the Peace Corps guys who come back and have the orientation to do something like that, as well as other jobs. So I think that's important that we go there because if not, we're not going to have the orientation to do some of these other things. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And of course, my name is Bill Lewis. I was Peace Corps in uh, Kenya. Uh, if you know approximately where Kenya is. Yes. And Ethiopia <laughs> and Somalia and where they all three come together. So that is my 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 stomping grounds. Um, it was nice. I didn't have Peace Corps in the main country. It didn't bother me at all. Nobody ever came up to visit. I had my own place. Um, I was a teacher up there. Had a wonderful time. All my students, of course, were nomadic. They were uh, basically Somali uh, camel herders, and um, for the price of one camel. You could get your kid in high school for a year, and um, worked out great as far as I was concerned. Um, I had an enormously good time. I enjoyed teaching. I still do. I was when I first came back to uh, back to Massachusetts. I was uh, subbing in the Somerville School District. Had had a great time, and uh, uh, I have a lot of good things to say about uh, Somerville there. But um, you know the Peace Corps. 
among other things, made me a more, more social person. I'm a bit of a nerd. I was a computer scientist most recently here at MIT. I was in the um, Broad Institute doing computational genetics. Uh, but I am still a member of my society, of my country, etc., etc. And at the moment, um, as an older member of my society, how long I have left in the world, I don't know. But 20, 30 years, I'm gone. And um, I feel very strongly that I want to do the best that I can to leave a, leave a society that uh, pretty much all of us say we want. Um, and so as part of Occupy Boston, I was out stomping the streets and making noise and you know, irritating CEOs at various large corporations, banks, etc. But um, for, for all the same reason, because I uh, firmly believe that I want a democratic nation where you know, uh, everybody has equal rights. And, which um, brings me to what I'm currently doing just as a... I'll actually ask your advice on this one. Um, it is my contention that uh, one of the major as roles of government is to supply, supply you know, common services, etc. And um, we use taxation to get the money for that. And especially in the recent years, of those of us like me who did okay in the world, our tax rates are going down and down and down. And, you know, for lower folks, it's going up and everything. And so I um, made myself a little button. I'm rich, I can afford to pay my taxes. And I'm working for the next governor of Massachusetts, and that's what I'm saying to them. And as I don't have ESP, I'm working for two Democrats and one Republican. I've basically just gone out holding signs and reading the scripts on their telephone, but every time I see them, I'm saying the same thing. And that's, that's a point that I really wanted to make, and so I'm trying to figure out how I can push that fundamental point that, no, we're f I'm rich, I'm fine, I don't need free money from the government. So, uh, in some sense, my Peace Corps service has pushed me in, in that direction, so. Great. Well, I'm Vanessa um, Porter. I live in Brighton. Um, I went to BU, actually, and I joined Peace Corps right after college. And um, for me, I served in Honduras, 2008 to 2010. I was an environmental ed volunteer. So I worked with a lot of youth, um, and really for me, Peace Corps was just a transformative experience that allowed me to be, I think, a better person um, in terms of the way that I look at the world and helped me get a job, too, ultimately. Um, when I came back from Peace Corps, I had all these really rich experiences, a lot of soft skills that they don't necessarily teach you in college, things like problem management. What do you do when you have a bunch of, peop a bunch of adults at a Junta de Agua water board and they're all fighting about something? How do you resolve that? Um, so when I came back from Peace Corps, you know, I came back to Boston, I moved to Brighton. I didn't know, really know exactly what I wanted to do, but the fact that I had Peace Corps on my resume really helped me get those job interviews. It helped me stand out above the crowd, and I felt like in any situation, whether I was interviewing or whatever, I had an opportunity to talk about an experience and bring up all these soft skills. Um, I now work as a marketing manager at a tech company down in Newton. Um, but while that's what I do during the day, my passion is still volunteering. And I think that's something you'll see about a lot of volunteers, and you'll hear through these stories, is your volunteering doesn't stop when you do Peace Corps. People who join Peace Corps get a world vision, and they're active, they're passionate, and they really want to make a difference in the world. So right now I'm a board member of the Girls on the Run, Greater Boston. So um, I'm the director of marketing over there. Um, I also work with the Peace Corps, the National Peace Corps Association. Um, the RPCV group here in Boston is actually the largest RPCV group in the nation, which is kind of cool. Um, so I help with all the advocacies with that group. Um, I also work at the MSPCA, so that's a really big thing for me. But these are all things, this, I think, sense of community and trying to, when you come to a new place, whether you just moved to Boston or you moved anywhere else, Peace Corps teaches you to really get involved with that community, make it your own, make it your home, and give back. Um, and that's something I think is really important for anyone to make a better world. That's it. I'm Judy Gates, and uh, I served in Peace Corps a little later than some, but not you, but at a different age, you know. <laughs> Uh, I went to Mongolia in 2008 and actually ended up serving there three years. I got home after the 27 months and really wanted to go back and uh, went back for another nine months. 
returned in 2012, but now I go back every summer and continue to work on my own projects at this time. I have uh, many very dear friends in the community where I lived, and there's always things that need to be done, um, and I just continue to keep in touch uh, throughout the year and figure out ways to uh, to continue to help. In fact, before I, uh, at the end of what I'm going to say here, I'm going to play you only 10 seconds of a little video that uh, grew out of uh, helping some friends mm. in Mongolia, uh, someone in the community where I lived, plus World Vision, plus a little school there to start what we call uh, what was a little preschool, kindergarten, way, way, way out in the uh, uh, countryside for children of herders who travel, <coughs> who, who move every few uh, months uh, during the year. And um, I was able to be there when actually it was the end of the little kindergarten at their closing ceremonies and um, taped some of the, they like to perform. So that's only 10 seconds, I'll show you. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I've always been involved in volunteer work. I've had a family, a career, um, but always done some things in the community, and I continue to do that. My focus these days, and I keep trying to say, okay, it's only these three things, Judy. It's Mongolia, of course. It's this it's, uh, criminal justice system now. I've, I've been involved in prisons, and I it's broken. I think we all can agree on that, and I'm doing whatever I can to help. And the other aspect is books. Uh, I'm a book lover and uh, trustee of our local library, and I'm finding a lot of other ways to share, including having met a f someone in Mongolia who's from Germany who started an organization called Book Bridge that establishes learning centers in uh, both in Mongolia and now in Cambodia, and I'm working with him to continue to develop that. So there's, as you can see for all of us, no lack of things we are passionate about and trying to continue to do, um, and the range is very wide. I wouldn't trade this experience for anything in the world, and frankly, I also feel people going into Peace Corps at my time in life <coughs> bring a lot of uh, experience, life experience that's much needed, and I basically say to everybody I meet, you know, I, I deliberately try to bring in the mention of Peace Corps, which is easy to do, um, but uh, I often say, you could do this, you know, um, and it's surprising how many people say, well, yeah, I'll check it out, or tell me more, so um, I'm just going to, as I I think we need something to lighten this up. <laughs> <laughs> what she does, I think that is what we all do. Right. And I'll do it. It's really the best. Oh, it's imagine. wonderful. <laughs> well, this, imagine, is so far out in the countryside, you can't even imagine how remote it is. This is the closing ceremonies, and these little boys are performing a little dance. Anybody who wants to see the whole thing afterwards, it's it's just two and a half minutes, but it's hysterical. <laughs> they're about three or four, and they're, uh, you can see beyond, this is, you can turn 360 degrees and, and, uh, not see anything in the distance. <laughs> it's, it's truly a fabulous place and it would bring tears to your eyes. Um, could I say just one more thing? The, a man who was there because we were working with World Vision happened to be the uh, country director of um, Mongolia for, <clears throat> for World Vision. He was from Ghana and had served in Darfur and uh, Sudan and elsewhere. Just now I came from the Boston Athenaeum, the library, um, and as I was leaving, I was picking up a bag I had, and the man at the desk saw, I think I've got my Peace Corps thing on, and he spotted and he says, I'm from Ghana. I remember those Peace Corps people. He wasn't a young fellow, you know, clearly, 
been around for a while, spoke English very well, but had nothing but highest praise. It makes me cry. <laughs> Chokes me up a little bit, too. Um, my name is Carrie McGowan. Um, I live in Dorchester. I've been there for about 20 years now. Um, I went into Peace Corps right out of college also, at Boston College. I was in Thailand from 1980 to 1983. Um, and um, I taught uh, English and agriculture in a, in a rural, rural development high school up in the northeast of Thailand, a uh, very poor area, one growing season a year, um, and <laughs> just became a part of the community that was there, and that was, you know, something I didn't expect to happen to me. Um, and I ended up extending also for a six-month period because for some reason we were put into the uh, school in the middle of the school year, so I ended two years in the middle of a school year, and I said, no, I'm just gonna, you know, I don't want to leave yet. Mm -hmm. So I finished out that school year. Um, came back to the U.S., and within a year, I was back in Thailand working in a refugee camp for two years. Um, just wanted to keep doing that experience. Would not have gotten that uh, experience if I had not had done peace work, because uh, I had the language and, and culture experience. But, um, uh, I was able to go back, and, and I did that for two years. So I spent a total of about five years in Thailand uh, in my trainings. Um, I came back, and I worked for a refugee program here in Boston, worked out of Chelsea uh, for a few years, and then we moved our office to Dorchester. Um, I did that for about six years, um, and for the last mm, 18 years plus, um, I've been at Harvard University working at the Phillips Brooks House Association, uh, which is a student-run um, nonprofit that uh, puts students into community <coughs> studies program across the city of Boston and Cambridge and elsewhere. Um, and so in some ways, I kind of feel like you know, it, 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 the idea of volunteerism has been was you know, seeds were planted probably before Peace Corps because I was at BC. I was in a volunteer program there as well. But um, uh, to, today, uh, you know, I feel privileged to work with um, bright and committed and idealistic students who want to, you know, do change in, in social justice work and. Um, uh, and I counsel a lot of students about Peace Corps, so there are, they know, was, as you can tell, Peace Corps becomes your identity, part of your identity anyway, uh, for the rest of your life. And, and uh, so they know that I'm a Peace Corps, a former Peace Corps volunteer. So I've talked to a lot of students. We've also sponsored um, Peace Corps uh, recruitment events in the house. Um, and um, we've seen a few of them go on to you know, become volunteers, decide that they want to do it, or say that, hey, you know, I want to do it some other time, perhaps, um, which is the beauty. I, mean, I say that to them. <laughs> That's fine, do it whenever, you know. Lillian Carter was, what, in her 60s, I think, when she was in India? Um, and uh, you, know, you can do it at any stage of your life. And um, What else I got out of it, too, um, was, I think, you know, some lifelong friends as well. Um, and not so much in touch with the, 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 the Thai uh, folks that I, you know, um, got close to, but certainly with, with my Peace Corps uh, cohorts that, um, well, now 35, whatever it is, almost years later, um, we're still in touch. We still have you know, a lot of, you know, of common interests and, and certainly politics um, to uh, you know, keep us going together. And, and just visited a friend out in Wisconsin earlier this year who was in the Peace Corps with me back then. And you know, another friend is in Hawaii, haven't been able to get to visit him, but someday maybe. Um, but it has definitely. Um, you know, tempered my, my whole life experience, I think, in, in so many ways. My friends who, you know, my friends I know well, know that it was the signature event in my life. My friend, because it has changed what I've done for the rest of my rest of my life. And I encourage people to go. Speaking Spanish now, I drive my wife crazy because wherever I go, there are Spanish speakers. I speak to them in Spanish. And it can be in a gas station, it can be a waiter, it can be in other things. And I speak to them, which is a good way to break the ice with people when they, they feel they know it, it's a friend almost, because you can speak to them and have to get somebody to translate. And uh, it drives my wife a little bit crazy <laughs> when I talk to people in the restaurant, but that's okay. Uh, one of the things we wanted to speak about is the Resolution 70. We know you've been a supporter of Peace Corps, and we thank you. And I think that it's, uh, it just, all of the things we've done has been worthwhile. The, um, one of the things that, that has not been mentioned is a lot of the people who have gone into foreign service 
at least have a much better concept of the um, of what the countries are like. They understand the cultures better than people who have just been chosen by the president or somebody else to be there. Stevens, who got killed in Libya, uh, I have a friend who served with him, and she said he was the greatest guy. He was beloved. Everybody who knew him, they loved him. And he knew the culture, which is a very big thing. In Kennedy Library a couple of years ago at the Peace Corps meeting, there were a couple of ambassadors who said that the term saved them. And I think that this, the Peace Corps helps a lot of people. It helps some while we're there, but I think it helps a lot more people when we get back. And I think that considering what it costs for a volunteer, we get a lot of bang for the buck. We, uh, we go in and we do things, and uh, even though it still costs a fair amount of money with all the support and all, it's much cheaper than some of the high-tech people who go in there, and they're not as culturally aware. So I think for us to go in there and continue this, and even make it grow, is a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, this fall will be 50 years since I signed up to train. <laughs> I'm one of the older guys in this. But, uh, but I still will do it, and I go back tomorrow. I wish you were worrying. I think. Anyway, but, uh, but I think we've got to promote this and get more people in there and support it as much as we can for the work we do over there and for the work we all do when we come back. And everybody here has done stuff. And these have been the signature events. And uh, I've convinced a few people to go. And I'm gonna, I still, every time I see somebody, I convince them to join that or other volunteers. If they're in high school, I convince them, try to convince them to go with Amigos because I think that's a good project. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing to there. I think serving overseas is a wonderful thing to open our eyes. Everybody doesn't think like you do or like I do. And we're all a little different. But we all feel that we've got a view of what else is going on. I don't have solutions for everything by any means, but we want people to go in and be aware of what else is going on in the world. So we'd like to support the Peace Corps and funding of it as much as possible. Specifically what's going up um, in front of the House right now is we're asking, we typically every year ask for robust funding. This year we're asking for $380 million for the Peace Corps. This is $10 million um, more than what we asked for last year. It's still lower than the peak funding of Peace Corps. Um, Peace Corps peaked its funding, I think, in 2010, 2009, um, and that was at about $400 million. So it's still lower than what we've been at. Um, the lowest it's gone to since I've started advocating is about 350. million. So every year we've gotten a little bit more. Um, but this year in particular, um, when we do our Day of Action, that's going to be in um, February, March, we're asking for $380 million. I think us in the community is much better than the fortress type of uh, embassies we have now around the world. I understand why we have them, but those people, years ago before they had those, the embassy people were much better. They mixed within the communities and did very well. Today they are not because of the nature of the world. Peace Corps is getting in these communities and saying it's better. One of the former presidents of Peru said it was great that he was taught by Peace Corps volunteers and he wanted to continue it. Um, so there's two other resolutions that are in the front of the house right now. There's um, H.R. 1576, and I'll leave this with you with the bill so you can read them. Um, but I believe Carrie and Julie yes. are going to speak to them. So um, the first is Respect for Peace Corps Act. So yeah, we were hoping that, you know, um, encourage you to co-sponsor the um, legislation uh, Respect for Peace Corps Volunteer Act, which would amend the Peace Corps Act to allow Peace Corps volunteers to use the symbol of the Peace Corps on grave sites and death notices. Um, I know, you know, that, as I said, it becomes a part of our identity, and, and my dad passed away a couple of years ago. He was a career uh, uh, veteran, and, um, you know, it was a source of pride for our family to be able to, you know, have him in at uh, born and, and to have, you know, his service on his headstone in our garden, and, and um, I certainly, for one, would, you know, be very proud to have. Uh, I wear my Peace Corps cap all the time. That's about all I can do. Um, but to be able to have um, something like that, you know, on my gravestone, um, or my ashes, probably. But, uh, um, but yeah. So we were hoping to, to uh, ask you to co-sponsor that. Yeah, so. The other bill up for co-sponsoring is the honoring international volunteers. 
it seems like perhaps it's certainly time to have a, a day to to honor the uh, those who have volunteered in an international way. I, I'm sure all of us here and it, it would absolutely say there's nothing like living in a community and getting to know the culture, the people, uh, at the level of the people. Um, I read something the other day, it's not exactly parallel, but it said, tourists see, travelers seek. And I thought, yeah, and I think you could say, I don't know exactly what you, how you'd put it, but Peace Corps and other international uh, volunteers live with the people in other cultures. And that's the best of all, I think, when you're trying to understand, I don't care what you think about the war with Iraq, but <laughs> if a, a few more of the people who were involved had understood that culture a little better, perhaps other, other uh, decisions or ways of working um, might have evolved uh, that, that would have prevented some of the terrible things that did happen. And I think that's true in every country in the world, that the more you understand the culture, the thinking, uh, the, the better decisions you make. And certainly I feel that was true for me in Mongolia. We have politics, we have politicians don't understand necessarily how the government told them to mix and so they took this to power and that's it. This is not a museum trip that we've taken to these countries. And, uh, it gives you a different perspective, you know. People tell me how beautiful this is and how beautiful that is, and it's true. Um, but this is not a museum trip, this is a people trip. And it's a much better understanding, and I think the world does better, and I think this country does better to understand that. And I think also, people have come back with that feeling, they go and they try to change something. And I'm not a superstar by any means, and I've just done the little things. Some of the guys I serve with have done a whole lot more. And uh, if I, just a regular old guy can do that, then a lot of these people are doing a lot more. And uh, at the end of our training in Peace Corps, they gave us a little you know, survey, and one of the questions was, where do you want to be placed? And I said, um, I'd love to be near the beach, you know, the ocean, or, a, <laughs> or up in a mountain. Well, they put me in the flat northeast, far from all of those things, and at first I thought, that's not what I wanted. But two years later, I wouldn't have traded that experience for anything, because I felt like I was put exactly in the right place, and had exactly the right experience. And, um, you know, got to know people, and, you know, lived with them, and, and you know, ate with them, and you know, shared with them, and uh, yeah, it, you know, uh, I got to go to the beach and <laughs> go on vacation into the mountains, but didn't need that. I needed what I got. Sometimes you share illnesses with them too, which is not as much fun as the rest of the stuff. Because <laughs> you get some of the local illnesses of living out in the country, mm. in the water, probably not being so great every day, and some of the food the same way. And uh, I've learned a lot about certain diseases, <laughs> not from the textbook. <laughs> and um, spent bent over and other things with that. And uh, but that's one way to learn about a disease and to learn this is what people go through. When I tell people the story of what I did to, about that extractions of what this girl would have had to go through, you know, everybody threw me a jaw drop and I say, that's what it's like. What is what it like? Let's see if we can change it a little bit. And we got to go back and we got to change not just what I had, but what everybody had. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of us feel the same way about other volunteers, not just Peace Corps, volunteers doing many other things. Because for people to go into volunteers and get out of their comfort zone and out of their culture, we all think that's great because we all think it helps. You know, it's like the jokes about them about like old army buddies from World War II and all that. But it's it's a different culture, and we want to we want to perpetuate it, not for social reasons, but because we think it's worth it. And we appreciate your support. Of it. And so we, I feel like we've just talked a bunch, and so I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to answer any of your questions, because this district in particular has been a huge feeder in terms of Peace Corps volunteers because of all the universities. Um, you know, some of these universities are the largest schools that produce volunteers. I think currently you have about 50 volunteers serving in your district. Historically, Massachusetts has 
uh, one of the larger volunteer populations. I think there's been over a thousand or two thousand Massachusetts residents who have served. So, you know, this is also a good chance. If you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to answer to it either about the process or what it's like or anything really that you would like to know. Um, I don't know a lot about this program. I probably just because I like the name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love the name. I don't have any real questions because I know exactly what they do and I know exactly what, why I so open and uh, I know exactly the pressures that I do. So uh, I don't have any questions. I just thank you for your service. You can count on me to be a supporter as long as it's around and even after it's gone. <laughs> I'll still be a supporter because I'll be able to try to fight to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, if you do sort of stop at something, then you can join the people. <laughs> 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 we were, I don't know about them, I know of me. I was not a superstar. I didn't do as well as I would have liked looking back in my career. I certainly was not a superstar in my training program, and nobody's ever considered me that way anyway. But if I can do it, then other people can do it on board. I mean, it's been worth it. Thank you, one of your fellow, fellow representatives locally, Kennedy, who was, who was in, the, in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Having a day also, just one last thing on that. Uh, if you establish a day to encourage, it will raise awareness on so many aspects how people can volunteer abroad uh, or get involved in so many different ways. Uh, and I, I have to say, I have been a little surprised some time have, since I've been back when people say, when somehow it comes up in the Peace Corps, sometimes they say, what's that, which is really scary, or, or is that still around, you know? So when I think all of us thinking of how much good we feel it does for the country, for ourselves, for our families, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it seems like setting aside a day to celebrate that, to encourage others to get involved, um, is frankly the least we can do. What's it going to cost us? One of you, okay. one of the representatives in the House of Massachusetts, who's at UMass, who's really thinking. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, David. David? Yeah, David. He, you know he David was at, uh, he'd been in Sierra Leone, and they were having the war there, and they were selling diamonds and buying guns, and if the kids didn't do what they want, they cut off some limbs. And those kids, all, a lot of these kids came to this country to, uh, to be treated, and get prostheses, and they had a house here, and he brought all these kids into the house here. And he said that uh, that brought a little bit of unrest there, which is and uh, the, the chairman, who was from Boston, said, passing it today, that he was willing to go get them and bring them in there. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's really good. So we still he keeps doing those things, even though he's not in that field anymore. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stories. And mm -hmm. like, for example, I served in Honduras, and there's a pretty strong Honduras population, Honduran population here. And I still love it when I see a Honduran flag or during the World Cup. It's like, <laughs> and like it's just nice to be able to talk that. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Peace Corps is a dialogue starter. It's a conversation. It's a conversation that continues after you're done with your service and continues throughout your life. And I think any time where people are communicating with each other and talking about the issues and bringing up the context, it's all good. Um, no matter what you believe or whatever, just the fact that we're talking is a huge point. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much for your time. Can we get a couple of pictures of you? Sure. All right.